So we are off to Vaughn Custom Sports stuff. <laughs> you know, you know who I'm talking about. We're heading off to Vaughn. They're actually their Canadian operation is in my hometown. It's where they actually make some of the pads, not all the pads, but uh, super nice guys down there. So we're gonna go down and take a look at the brand new SLR fours. Buckle up, babies. Let's go. use your backup camera on your car. I can't, I can't <laughs> figure out what it is I'm seeing, even though I know I'm seeing basically a movie of where I'm supposed to be going. I don't know. Doesn't work for me. I still like to just do the crank around and look right out the back window. We didn't have backup cameras back in the 80s when I learned to drive. And here we are at the Vaughn factory. Well, we're actually in front of the scrub square. Lots of uh, cars parked on the street today, so we'll just have to walk a little bit. Hey gang, we are back at the Vaughn factory with Connor and with Jay. Uh, Connor is the pro rep, Jay is the consumer rep, and we're talking about the SLR4 chest and pants. What has changed uh, and also just, yeah, what is just so good that they didn't have to change it. So <laughs> Jay, why don't you walk us through uh, what the, the new setup? Absolutely, yeah, that's, uh, you hit the nail on the head there. So, so basically, uh, SLR3 was a winner for us, uh, SLR4. Uh, just some fine tuning on this particular unit. Uh, first call would be that there's less aerospacer, so durability. Uh, so what, run us, what's aerospacer? Yeah, aerospacer is this material here. Um, obviously, it's, it's a finished product kind of look. Uh, it looks fantastic. Um, just with Velcro, we just try to kind of keep it away from Velcro when we can. So we got a little more nylon uh, throughout the unit as well. Um, in terms of the body, the body hasn't changed a ton. We've got the ability, like we talked about with SLR3 in our last video, to half tuck so we can tuck in this flap. We talked about the Euros kind of doing that and maybe originating with that and maybe a few other goalies. So we've got the ability to half tuck. We've got the ability to tuck in our pants and then we've got the ability to wear it out. So younger goaltenders, we find maybe families aren't necessarily aware of the whole tucking system. So a lot of goalies will uh, not tuck and have it out great mobile, mobile unit in terms of segmentation like we talked about in the past. Um, I'm a tucker. This is my go-to chest protector for sure. Uh, I've tried it half tucked. I've tried it tucked. Uh, it, it both, they both work for me. How, how many of you are quite intrigued by the half tuck concept? Mm. I'm quite intrigued by it. I'm chicken to try it because I am a tucker and I'm proud of it. Proud tucker. Um, and I don't want to I don't want to get out and find that it feels terrible, but I'm really intrigued by the half tuck. Idea. Yeah, yeah. I think also just to kind of expand on that, if, if you are, if you have this unit and you want to try a half tuck situation in your practice or if you're training, um, you've got your loop, you're going to tuck this part into the pant and you're going to tie down with the loop, just like you do when you tuck. And then these will flare out over your pants and it'll be sit out on top of your pants, like a non-tuck position. Half tuck, half not tucked. That is cool. That is cool like for that. sure. Adjustability remains the same. We have three loops at the top of the chest protector. We can move the floaters to the outer loop to again, have a larger presence in the net. Uh, we can move it to the inner loop. Moving it to the outer loop helps us when we're looking on our post. Yeah. Very important call out. Less banging around with the chin of our mask and our dangle. Yeah. And looking I like, bigger. I like that a lot, actually, because it drives me crackers. If if I or like maybe talk to you about the chest, because if I'm looking down and my mask is hitting, that that will make me batty. Exactly. So we're talking that that adjustability is up and down. So is the belly long enough, and is the neckline low or high enough? So you want to find that happy place where you can look down and not have the neckline push up on your mask. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you don't want to have too much of your neck exposed. Right and you need it to be low enough to, to hit with your jock or gel to be in the right spot there. So we've got full adjustability with, again, whatever loop we choose, whether it's a first loop or the second loop, to move the chest protector mm -hmm. down, up, in the middle where it needs to be. Okay, so you just, in passing, you just mentioned something about the sort of the, ch the chest protector, you know, kind of matching up, meeting up with the jock or the gel. Can you, and that, honestly, I never even thought of that. Like, so yeah. can you kind of run us through like what, yeah, like, so do you want to make sure that the, that that belly of the chest protector comes so that it just covers sort of the, the waistband top part of your jocker jill or what's? Yeah, I mean, quite honestly, that is a comfort thing. So I think the thing to think about is when you're not in your stance, 
where are you? And then when you get in your stance, because everything rides up a bit, is the bottom, is the belly portion getting to where it needs to be yeah. in your lower abdomen area? And when you're in your crouch, are you comfortable? Mm -hmm. So what I've learned is that, you know, using a slightly shorter chest protector is beneficial. With a longer chest protector, it would push up. So you get in your stance, it would push up, and then it push everything up, and then everything would rise. Now, yeah. that can help you when you're trying to make a save at times, but at the same time, it doesn't help with Ugh, mobility. I hate right. that. I hate, like, I hate yeah. pulling it down, trying to pull it down. Yeah, down so I, I think it's very yeah, important. That's a good, I like that so, idea, like so, in your crowd. Yeah, yeah. What, for a parent, you know, at home, get your goalie in their gear. Mm -hmm. See where it is, feel when they're standing up, get in the crouch. If you've got overlap, it's fine, because mm -hmm. that's where you need to be, right? Like, I mean, that's... Yeah, the one thing we obviously want to avoid is that there's a, ma like, there's a significant gap between your docker jail and then the bottom portion of your chest and arm, right? Even if, you, if you're a extreme croucher when you play, even when you're standing up, we can't have that big of a gap because I mean, pucks, pucks come through, right? It could be tipped. It could be changed direction. You know, we don't want to get exposed areas obviously hit. So we just don't want that gap in between the jock, jill, or the chest and arm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's important to kind of make those decisions and look and try it on before you're rushing to the rink. You know, have, have the knowledge and say, okay, wow, like this is too short. We need to get something new, something bigger, or wow, like maybe this is too big. Maybe that can be your chest protector next year and we'll get you a new one now. Okay, this brings me to another question too, because I, I think as well, parents who haven't played, they might, their, their child or even adults who are new to the game, they might go and think, oh, well, the, so my arm should go here. Like it should fit like my jacket fits. Right. Do you want to talk a little bit about yeah, arm length? Please? Absolutely, yeah, for sure. I'm going to touch on the arms here as well. So on the SLR line, we've got the ability with these snaps to go longer, unsnapped as you see it or yep. we can snap them in and make the arm shorter. But it's still attached. It's uh, attached and you've got time, about yeah. an, an inch and a half yeah, yeah. of play there yeah, to raise nice. it. Yeah. So uh, it's a great call out. We don't want the bottom wrist portion of our chest, uh, chest and arm pushing against our gloves because then we're then forcing our glove back on and pushing our glove back on. So we want to find that happy place. I know we touched on it with our SLR3 video. Um, some will go with one done up and one not done up. Um, some will go done up because you definitely want to have that mobility in your wrist to, to be where you need to be and not have that glove being pushed off. Um, so I think this particular system to me is the best system I think we've come up with because you've got a lot of play there. Yeah, and I like it's easy to adjust. You know, it's not, you don't have to like, it's not tied in or anything. So here's an interesting little, some food for thought for you. We were at the, at, at the coaching conference at the World Juniors in Sweden that we were chatting about. And uh, another brand came in to just show some of the new stuff mm -hmm. they were working on. And Larry Sadler, who's a legend, uh, he's like, why don't they make different arms? Like, why doesn't the, why doesn't your catching arm different from your blocker side arm? And, uh... Everyone was like, what a good idea. Like, why? Do, well, why? Look, it, that's, it's funny you bring that up. So there are goalies out there that we do that for. So with the snaps that we have on the chest and arm, that is 100% feasible. So there are goalies out there that like the longer arm on their blocker because they get more coverage there. Your wrist nine times out of ten is not exposed when you're on your blocker side. And then they'll snap the glove side shorter so that there's, there's no hinged ability in your wrist, you have that mobility, it's not knocking against your catcher, and you're able to do the one arm longer than the other. Yeah, that's very cool. And I think too, in design, there was a time period, you know, 20 years ago maybe when, you, you know, maybe there was a minor tweak to a left arm and a right arm based on blocker and glove, but I think really companies have evolved, we've evolved into making it work for all. Full right goaltender, you know, when they're reaching their glove out, you right. know, they've got the proper coverage and they've got their blocker where it needs to be on their left hand and then for regular goaltender. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that's a good call out for sure. Um, with the arms themselves, we've changed, redesigned the arms on this unit. Um, the SLR3 had the, the uh, Ventus oval cap, which was very popular for sure for a while. And then we basically just kind of went with the arm floaters that overlap uh, an oval cap here. Oh, okay. A little bit more coverage, um, just quite frankly, just a design that's, that's been kind of evolved over time and, and kind of more the norm. And uh, in terms of the arms, like I, I've worn the unit uh, three times on the ice and uh, right off the bat, I had no issues again, and that's what you want. Um, so not really a ton, shoulder caps a little bit larger. Uh, the second piece is, is basically the same. We've got a little bit more coverage here um, in the unit and 
just a redesign, redesigned arm floater in itself. Yeah. That's a nice looking unit. Yeah, we're getting stuck on the Velcro. <laughs> no, a really nice, really nice looking unit. And yeah, just like this has been a great chest protector for you guys. So it's like, well, let's just tweak it, make it a little, right. take some of the feedback that we get from recreational and pro goalies and make it a bit better. Also like the suspender. Holds. Yeah, yeah, good call out there. You can obviously put the suspenders in through there. And then we've got the massive pillows in behind the shoulder floaters, which can be uh, stuck on and moved out slightly to, to have a larger presence. Um, I think you touched on it too. Like when we look at pro goalies that, that Connor and, and the U.S. team got into this unit, they, they stick with it. Like yeah. there's a lot of guys who use that unit. Same thing with the pants, which we're going to touch on. Um, and we say it, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Um, you know, minor tweaks again. Um, but tweaks for the better, and, and I think we have a pretty great chest and arm right here for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, I think it's awesome. So this, I think this, I feel like this is a plant. I feel like I'm gonna walk out of here leaving some dollars on my credit card, but <laughs> <laughs> so, so this isn't in honor of Goalie Training Pro, but they are very sharp colors. Uh, and so I walked in, I was like, oh my God, did you guys make me a chest protector? <laughs> and he's like, no, that's a stock colorway. So yes. tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, so um, as we, we kind of come uh, with stock colorways, we're, we're trying to create shelf appeal, we're trying to create a buzz. The V10 had uh, all black, charcoal, hints of red, and then there was a, a nice red um, and charcoal and black unit. So we went with the, uh, the neon green, uh, right here, and which totally is training pro colors, basically, which, let's just which, say what it is, yeah. which is awesome, has a ton of shelf appeal. So the stock units that you will see, um, there's some in stores now currently across Canada and there will be more coming in stock units will be this color. The unit I had in my hand before would be a custom all black unit, which there will be retailers with custom all black beefed up units uh, that we've talked about in the past. But again, we're talking shelf appeal. We're talking visual appeal and, uh, I think Maria approves. I approve. Yeah, it's yeah, it's got my wheels spinning for sure. So I think, and I think it's really smart. Like I think, as, and especially like I'm old, but the young people, you know, they they want a little sizzle, and uh, exactly. that's that's sizzly for sure. Good stuff, guys. Yep. Okay, let's check out the pants. Thank you. All right, so SLR four pants. Uh, again, this has been a this has been a fantastic pant for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, what what did you change or tweak, if anything? Uh, not a lot. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, we had a ton of great feedback at uh, obviously the retail minor hockey level, uh, tier two junior A level, university level. So uh, obviously this is our kind of wider fitting pant um, aimed at the tucker or that goalie that wants room to tuck. It does come with an internal belt that is removable, obviously, uh, like a lot of pants do. Um, but again, we had a pant here that was redesigned for the SLR3. Uh, with a new shape um, and segmentation in these uh, hip pads. And we've got the double uh, hip pad here as well, which carries over from SLR3. And we've just got a big bulletproof wide pant that takes up a lot of room, that's super mobile, that I would say a lot of goalies gravitate to. Connor and myself both wear this pant. We're just, you know, it's just one of those things where it fits you like a glove and you have no questions when you wear it and you're like, yeah, it works and you don't feel anything and you take up a lot of space in the net yeah. and, you're, and you're mobile. Why would, why would you ever change? Exactly. And I think we called it out as well with SLR3, we have these massive hip pads in here, which yeah. is a huge, uh, it's, it's something you don't see on the outside of the pant, but you, on the inside of the pant. So when you are uh, in the RVH yeah, yeah. and you are jamming up against that post, yeah. you just have massive integration and, and a lot of padding there and it just works. Um, for sure. So again, obviously carbon HD foams throughout. Um, we've talked about integration with chest protector uh, in the past. I've worn the SLR4 for a few skates. I've worn the V10 most recently for a few skates and tucked and had no issues with that. So again, if your pants are wide enough and big enough and you are a tucker, then your integration is fine with both. And again, we talked about Velocity 10 kind of being a little bit more of a tapered fit at the waist. Maybe better for the non-tucker, but you can still tuck in that pant too, um, if it's wide enough. Yeah. And I think too, you know, we, we called it out, um, but we talked about the pros who we got into this pant and the success that Connor and the guys in the U.S. have had. I mean, Connor's getting a ton of guys into this pant still. Yeah, I mean, within pro hockey, that pant that you see right there, the SLR3, SLR4, is dominant in pro hockey. It's, you know, there's plenty of guys, I'm sure you can see on a nightly basis, that are in that pant. Um, it's, like Jay said, it's bulletproof. It, it's got, you know, the size for it. For the tuckers or the non-tuckers, it, it just works. So a lot of pro hockey's in that pant, and 
you know, we can't really complain about it. So yeah, it's the Jeep Wrangler of hockey pants. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. And I think, um, I think when you have something, uh, our pants were dominant before, um, this, uh, help us get more guys into our pant. This particular yeah. SLR3, SLR4 helped us even get more guys. Yeah. So we were, we owned the market share before and we own even more now. So yeah. anytime that, and I, when I'm fitting goaltenders across Ontario and when we have a conversation, do you tuck, do you not tuck? Um, what are you using now? The internal belt on the pant helps a goalie keep the pant on, obviously. So if you do not tuck, you have the ability just to crank on that internal belt, the pants stay up, you cannot tuck. There's also a way uh, that, you know, Connor can probably touch on it because I think it's a genius way where you take a par part of the internal belt out, right? And then take it out of the first loop. Yeah. I can crank see that it totally. And tuck. There's still and that room. That is a Connor, oh, a Connor Reichman special yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to be the one to say that I'm the pioneer for it, but right. I did <laughs> find something out and I, it's working for me. So we'll definitely show you the. Uh, the little internal belt trick that I tend to yeah. use. And, and that's what we do. We talk about yeah. ideas that work for us and we, we integrate them. So I, I show people, okay, you need the internal belt. Watch this, right? Yeah. Take it out of its first loop, rig yeah. it up Cut and it you've got, you got, yeah. ga you got a gap right there for your chest yeah. protector. Yeah. So yeah. talk that's, about doing the best of all worlds. Yeah. That's genius. Actually. I love that. But that's the thing. Cause you guys are with goalies and talking to goalies and, and again, of every different level. And so, you know, you sort of, come up with these ideas or pick up these things and yeah and I, I, love it. I think too for the all the spectators out there when you're watching nhl games when you see these yeah. hip floaters these hip pads that's what you're looking for you'll notice them because they're big and you'll see them on a ton of goalies and you'll be like oh yeah that that goalie's wearing von pants yeah and you can just see it by the shape by the seams and the segmentation um but yeah an absolute again i'll say it all day an absolute winner um and and we love this pant yeah it's gonna be a big pant. It's a for big you. pant for sure. It's a large. But we're gonna large. walk you through it. Okay. Okay. So, like, you can see that the belt normally goes through, like it would sit in here. Yep. Like so. So what Connor's done is just taken it out of the first loop on each side. Right. And then what you would then do, obviously, you're gonna do this up. That way, the main purpose of this is so you get the gap from. Yeah your chest and arm in the front of the pant. So you would crank that down. Now, obviously these pants are way too big for you, but we're gonna work yeah. with it here. So your chest is gonna be obviously on your body here. You still have the gap in between here so that when you do lace yeah. up the pant, everything is integrated together. You then are gonna tie these into the uh, front chest yeah. loop that you get yeah. on there and it lines up perfectly. Yeah. That way That's you still, you get the integrated tuck that yeah. you want. Yeah. And everything's nice and snug. Because on my current pants, I hardly use the belt because I don't want it, like it keeps me from tucking in right. as exactly. deep as I want it. Yep. So um, so my pants are really just hanging off my chest protector. Yeah. But this is this is nice. Yeah, and I think too, like, again, this is an evolution of, of a way to tuck yeah. by using an internal belt. And a lot of yeah. tuckers will take that internal belt out yeah. and rig it up with the laces. Yeah. But I think, and suspenders, and suspenders, yeah. right? So... Um, this just takes it to a whole new level. Yeah. Now I wasn't I wasn't a fan of suspenders, so again, I didn't have enough room in front of my pant because the belt was there. I didn't like using suspenders, yeah. so this was kind of um, call it a Frankenstein or method to the madness to where I just tried this and it worked perfectly. I, I didn't yeah. have to wear suspenders. Yeah. Nothing moved, and it's nice and snug in there. Yeah, I because I wear suspenders and tie down yeah. because I'd hate it to ride up. Hundred percent. But I think this could, yeah, I could get rid of this. You could, or you still can, yeah. like you, because the suspenders, the suspenders do help bring everything down. Yeah. Look, That's the nice, the nice thing is, is you can try. You can try it both ways. Yeah, exactly. you can try it without suspenders. You can try it with suspenders. Yeah, you can always put it back in. Yeah. you know, taking it out easy. of that loop. Like it's not, yeah, it's, it's not, not like permanent, it's a big right? Deal. If you don't like it, it takes two seconds to fix. Exactly. Sure. That's unreal, guy. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Not just a pretty face. That's it. <laughs> so uh, that that is the scoop on the SLR4 pants and chest protector. Just always tweak and always making it work better for you so you can go out and do what you do without thinking about your equipment, pulling your chest protector down or having it pop out of your pants and that kind of thing. So uh, thank you very much, guys, and I will catch you next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. Whoosh.